Hi, welcome to the podcast by Dr. Shushma Singh. Let us start conversation on Unit 17, Education, Expansion and Growth. And our topic is Buddhist period. About the 6th century BC, rigidities of Vedic rituals and sacrifices along with the overwhelming dominance of the Brahmins over the lower castes became responsible for the disenchantment of the masses with the prevailing system. Gautam Buddha, the great religious leader as well as social reformer, preached non-violence and social equality. He vowed for a casteless society. As a result, the social discrimination in the field of education that was prevalent in the Vedic period was challenged during this period. And it was the first attempt towards providing education to the masses. During the Buddhist period, education was institutionalized. Educational institutions enjoying greater repute as Takshila, Nalanda and other florist during this period. These institutions attracted students from several countries. Young children were admitted to these institutions and education was imparted for a fixed period of time as in modern times. During this period, Sanghas came up and that were the centers for all religious instructions and activities. Later on, these Sanghas emerged as the centers that were also involved in educational activities. The Gurukuls and Ashrams of the Vedic age were thus substituted during this period by institutionalized Sanghas or monasteries. These institutions were akin to the universities of the modern world. During this period, entrance tests were common in educational institutions. Only those successful at these tests were allowed to avail of the educational services provided at these institutions. The number of students in educational institutions was quite high. There were thousands of students and teachers at these institutions. Therefore, Buddhist educational institutions had a wide perspective. This was a step forward from the individualized and exclusive functioning of the Gurukuls of the Vedic period. The educational institutions of this period being open to all sections of society were more inclusive in nature and had a collective participation. In order that the common man did not have to grapple with the complexities of Sanskrit, which was the medium of educational and literary activities earlier, the languages commonly used, Pali and Prakritic, were resorted to. In spite of the marked differences between the educational systems of the Vedic and Buddhist period, the curriculum followed in the later period still reflected a continuation of that of the Vedic period. Dharma or religion was the main curricular component at the monasteries. The curriculum included components such as the theology, philosophy, literature, astronomy, administration, etc professional studies like medicine, surgery, etc. were also carried out in these institutions. 
education was imparted following the payment of fees by the students this was the beginning of the education becoming a paid service as in the vedic period the students were supposed to observe celibacy and be fully obedient and respectful towards their teachers just as the brahmins were in charge of the imparting education in the vedic period during this period the monks at the monasteries were in charge of it the monks were celibates and spend their time in prayers meditation and studies Huen Sang had recorded that thousands of priests who were men of a highest ability and talent with great distinctions and whose conduct was pure sincerely followed the moral law they spent their time in discourses thus the teachers of this period as in the vedic period were rewarded in society because they were persons of character and erudition we thus see that during the buddhist period the first attempts were made to impart education to the masses there was greater social equality in imparting education however the education of women did not receive its due importance and the educational scenario continued to be dominated by men the buddhist period did not last in india and became popular abroad for 500 years from the 4th century ad to the close of 8th century during the reign of gupta dynasty and its successors there was a remarkable advancement in several areas the rulers patronized scholars and remarkable contributions were made in different areas such as science mathematics astronomy art literature etc here we want to wind up this conversation and thank you so much for choosing this podcast